Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another Pick a Card reading. Or as one of you said in the comments last week, a pickle card reading. And yes, that definitely made me laugh. Thank you so much for that comment. It does sound a bit that way. And you know, today, guys, I'm not exactly sure what we're doing because I've had such a busy day and I have just finished working on my first tutorial, which you're very welcome to go to the website and just you're welcome to have a look, guys. Basically, I have just launched my first tutorial, how to read a Vedic astrology chart from scratch. So if anyone wants to go and check that out, you can. It's on discount. I'm going to be launching it properly on the Feb Outlook, which I should be recording early next week. So that's when I'm going to be kind of announcing it properly. But yeah, if you want to go and just take a peek and see what's there, you're welcome. I'm also hoping to put together a little tutorial on the meditation practice that I do. And I think some of you guys will be interested in an intuition tutorial. I know some of you on the pick of cards, you've specifically requested that. So that is in the works. I don't know when I'm going to be launching that. There is just so much <laughs> that I've got to do in terms of creating things for the website and just, yeah, I'm busy all the time. So today I was thinking about, you know, what what topic are we going to do? I haven't even had time to think. This is the thing. I haven't even had time to think. Now, thankfully, I put these together on the weekend. So I'm, I've forgotten what's in here. There's, I vaguely remember we've got some stoic wisdom type people in here. So that's going to be fun. But yeah, I think we're just going to do a general read, just a general, what do you need to know now kind of reading. Let's see what comes up. I've got a few standard oracle decks here. Um, yeah, let's just get right into it. So guys, you can choose from either group one, group two, or group three, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. If you chose group number one, then you are in the right place. Let's take a look and see. Let's start with the oracle decks, actually, and then we'll draw some tarot. So I'm actually going to draw three of these first. I thought what I would do is I would shuffle and draw three of these first and we can look at them first and then and then draw tarot afterwards so that way we're not just sitting through a whole load of card shuffling although although you know that is a little bit relaxing I love watching these as well I find the whole tarot pick card thing yeah, really relaxing. I was trying to explain it to my mum why I like it. I think it's because it's like your own personal little art gallery. I think that might be one of the reasons I like this so much because I really enjoy looking at the, the visuals, the things that people draw. Oh, how beautiful. Courtship. Wow. Well, what an intro group one. So there is a theme that's building already. Let's see. This could also be work. This could also be, you know, a headhunter is, is trying to get you to come to their company or something like that. So let's keep an open mind. Round and round. Okay. Perhaps some strong mercurial energy is present. Let's take a look at this. Acceptance. Oh, how beautiful. We've got this gorgeous green color, which is the color of the heart chakra. So I do think we're dealing with feelings. We're dealing with, with emotions. Why don't we, you know, I'm going to do three per group because I know I've got nine in here. Why don't we start with one of these? Why don't we start with the kind of the wisdom first and then we'll see what Tarot has to say. So we're doing everything a little bit different today. So I like to mix things up a bit. So we've got Seneca. I knew there were some Stoics in here. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant. Mm. 
fate leads the willing. Okay, let's keep that in mind as we shuffle. We shuffle some tarot. Now this, these cards that I'm going to draw here will give us quite a bit more of a picture as to what is going on. So let's see if we can build this story out. Okay. Take another one. Oh, let's take them both. And we won't have any from the Saturn deck. Ah, this is what we've got. Let's see what comes. King of Wands. Wonderful. Well, this is great energy. And I mean, courtship. Yeah, courtship round and round. Acceptance, King of Wands. This is the king who is creative. He's passionate. He wants to build an empire. He's ready to build an empire. He's on fire. I mean, he's the king of wands. He's dealing with fire energy. Fire energy, you have to be in the now. You can't be somewhere else. You have to be in the now. Nine of Pentacles. Again, this is a beautiful card of, of you enjoying your life on your own, actually. Nine of Pentacles, whenever I see the Nine of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups as well, to me that's a real self-satisfaction. It's like you actually don't need anyone else. You're very happy doing your own thing. The Ace of Swords, fantastic. This can be a new beginning when it comes to communication, when it comes to how you express yourself. Perhaps there's a new beginning here because the aces are new beginnings. We, we begin the whole cycle again. And what do we have here? Wow, the Eight of Cups. Yeah, you're walking away. Did we have this for you last time, group number one? I feel like we did. This is amazing. Well, there are some interesting things that we can say here. I, I actually think that this is your strongest card. The Eight of Cups, walking away. Often this is seen as a sad card, as a, you know, we've got a bit of a gloomy picture here. There's darkness, there's moonlight, there's this person going off to the mountains, to the unknown. And sometimes this is a card, yeah, you're leaving a relationship, you're leaving your family, you're leaving something behind. In this case, group number one, I would say that you might be leaving a relationship behind that isn't working. And why would I say that it's not working? I would say because you've got this round and round effect going on here. So you're not certain about this relationship. It could also be a job situation as well where there's a job or there's some kind of, yeah, and I'm also getting the phrase situationship as well. I feel like there's something that you need to leave behind. You need to walk away from. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant. Fate leads the willing. And it's like you, 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 what's needed from you now, I think, is fate leads the willing. So if you're decisive, if you have a vision, and if you go after it, if you accept the situation, whatever this situation is that you're in, there's something about you needing to accept what you can't control. This is the serenity prayer. This is, you know, God grant me the strength to accept the things that I cannot change. Oh, I'm not very good at quoting this. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> How do I do that? Let, I'll put it on the screen and you can have a read of it. But it's something around accepting the things I can't change. 
knowing what I can change and having the wisdom to be able to discern the difference. And I feel like that's what you need right now. You need to know what's in your hands, what's not in your hands. You see, and I always think that I always think that people regret, like at the end of your life, if you get to the end of your life, what what are the things you regret? I tend to think that I know me, I would regret the things. If I knew I could have done something about it and I didn't do something about it, I would have a problem with me. And I think that's what this King of Wands is all about. And this Ace of Swords here. Well, this Ace of Swords might be encouraging you to, to do something new, actually, maybe that you haven't done before. And that's to do with expression, that's to do with you speaking or you sharing something. But yeah, I feel like this King of Wands character, I think he, and I, I kind of think this, this one does look quite feminine. I like this deck because it's kind of neutral. They don't really make it too clear what's what but I mean if it's he or she anyway this person when they get to the end of their life you know I, I, I don't think a king of wands would would have too much regret at all let's actually let's let's shuffle with Saturn let's just see what's in here let's let's get another card what has Saturn got to say the black and gold deck <laughs> the heavy the heavy energy deck the one with the interesting diagrams. Okay, I want this to be really obvious. What have you got to say, Saturn? What's going on? Oh, that one's looking pretty obvious to me. Let's take it. Okay. And these are upright or upside down, so let's see what we've got. All right. So the Seven of Wands, when this is in its upright position, you are you're kind of at the top of the hill, actually, and you're having to defend people who are up and coming. Maybe you're, maybe you're tired of having to defend yourself or having to explain yourself as well. Maybe you perceive or believe that you, you shouldn't have to work so hard as well. Interesting. I want to take another one. Let's put that there and we'll take two from the jar as well oh wow the devil far out cool look at that jeez what a devil (laughs) yeah hmm And I, with this, I'm getting a sense that if you stay in this situation, whatever this situation is that you could, you could actually do with having a real break from or walking away from, this is going to help you to walk away. Because hmm. the devil is bondage it's addiction it's you know being it's really being stuck I'm getting a strong feeling because either it's like either you accept this situation that you're in where you're stuck or you're going round and round and possibly you're going around and around with one other person. This could be a work thing. This could be a job thing. But either, it's like either you accept this situation or you really break free. I'm going to put the devil here with acceptance. It's like there's something that you have to either accept it or you have to use your free will. Look at that. Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant. You've got the power to create what it is that you want. You've got the power to create and you've got the power 
to walk away, create something new. Okay, you've got the power to walk away, create something brand new, express yourself in a way that you have never done ever in your life. Caroline Mace talks about this. She talks about that, you know, one day you will wake up and you will say I in a way that you have never said it before. You know, I am doing this. I believe in this. I want this. You know, and look at this satisfaction here. I think you've got a real potential. This, this Nine of Pentacles is self-satisfaction is wealth, abundance, happiness, and it's on your own. And I kind of feel like I think you need to achieve this, this self-satisfaction on your own. It's going to be a really good thing for you. And it doesn't mean that you'll never have this, okay, that you'll never have this intimacy or this love or, you know, if you want that, that's, that's there for you. But there's something right now That is, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge. And it's it's a bit heavy. I could imagine you'd be tired. This is like, oh gosh, do I have to keep something? Yeah, there's something you're being exhausted by. Let's have a look what we've got in here. It is one of the most difficult things in the world to look at anything simply. Because our minds are very complex. We have lost the quality of simplicity. Krishnamurti, Absolutely. You've got to simplify. You've got to simplify your world. That will help enormously at this time. Let's take a look at the last one here. Oh, this is wonderful. I love this quote. When you do something beautiful and nobody noticed, do not be sad. For the sun every morning is a beautiful spectacle, and yet most of the audience still sleeps. John Lennon, yeah, absolutely. And to me, this really taps in with these three cards. It's like, create your beautiful world. Create, and don't worry if, and look at that, self-satisfaction. Don't worry if nobody notices, you see? Yeah, see, these cards are really asking you to come and build this magnificent world that you probably are working very hard to build right now. Keep doing it. Keep building this world of yours. And in time, you will share it. You know, it's not like you'll be doing your own thing forever. No. This is really nice energy. It's lovely energy, especially if you pick up your free will at this time and you create. You make what you want. That's going to be the ideal thing for you right now, group number one. Well, I am sending you lots of good vibes. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there group number two. If you chose group number two then you are in the right place. Let's take a look. Actually before I shuffle these we're going to do the oracle cards first. I was thinking on the weekend that what I should do is I should shuffle some oracle cards first. We can look at the oracles together and then I'll shuffle some tarot. So that way it's not too much shuffling at the beginning. Oh, hang on. Is that a little bit of something? Sorry. There's a bit of something. I don't know what that is. There we go. <laughs> this... Um, yeah, place where I am is a little bit dusty as well, which is fine. I don't know which city is more dusty, actually, Sydney or London. I think, well, Sydney is a little bit dusty, actually. They say that, like, there are more, more people have allergies in Sydney than they do in London. Isn't that interesting? I read that somewhere. Okay. Let's take a look and see what's in your oracle cards. We might even draw one of the quotes. And then, ooh, love it. Distant horizons, yes. That sounds good to me. Isn't that interesting? I was just talking about Sydney and London. They're very distant sort of places. Wow. Okay, ooh, new life. Well, that looks amazing. She looks happy. 
Looks like she's, oh yeah, she's just broken out of an egg. I thought it was a fortune cookie. Well, it could be. <laughs> it looks like an egg. All right. And what do we have here? Cosmic consciousness. Yes. I love it. Lord Krishna. And perhaps some of his many girlfriends. <laughs> I love that. I love how Indian gods have heaps of girlfriends. <laughs> Okay, well, Krishna does anyway. Lord Krishna does. Uh, what do I want to do? Let's take one of these. Let's see what's in here. I'm going to draw three of these per group. I'm not going to do an Instagram post today. Thought we'd, we'd uh, be greedy for each group. Okay, it says, Pay no attention to the thoughts that bother you. Don't fight them. Just do nothing about them. Let them be wherever, whatever they are. Your very fighting them gives them life. Just disregard, look through. And this is Nisargadatta Maharaj. Yeah, I saw this on Instagram and I was really impressed. Pay no attention to the thoughts that bother you. Don't fight them. And I mean, that should be easy to do with this incredible spread we have already because this is asking you to think big tune into your purpose, be grand, have a vision. Having a vision is so important. And I was saying this to someone the other day. I was saying to them, because this person I know kind of wastes his time a little bit. <laughs> and I was saying to him, you're a dreamer, but you're not a visionary. And there's something interesting about that. I feel like you're being asked to be a visionary. A leader always has a vision. A leader is a visionary and the vision inspires you to put in the work, to put in the effort, to go for it, to move forward. You do need to have a vision and a vision is different to having a dream. A dream is, dream is a place where we go to escape reality. But a vision is something that you're actively moving towards and you're actually going to manifest that. You're actually going to create that. You're actually going to ground that vision. So visions are quite real. Visions are practical. And this is kind of asking you to pay no attention to the thoughts that bother you. Pay no attention to any thought that gets in the way of that vision or distracts you or you know gets you to procrastinate or gets you off the path. Okay, so this is a very interesting group so far. And we've got a brand new deck for you, group number two. Let's see. I haven't used this one. I've used it a little bit um, when I received it, but oh, there we go. Nine of soul. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Pay no attention to the thoughts that bother you. Well, we've got a card that's speaking about that. And that just jumped out, didn't it? Amazing. Let's take this one. That's incredible. Nine of Swords is anxious thoughts. It's thoughts swirling in the mind. It's, you know, something's keeping you up at night. It's, um, it's worry. It's, you know, let's take one more. Oop. <laughs> let's see what we get. Oh, that one's sticking out. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we've got this in line with this guidance already. King of Coins, King of Pentacles. Okay. It's good. Some stability. We like the King of Coins. King of Pentacles. Okay, Six of Swords. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are some things going on here for you, group number two. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and the Two of Cups. How wonderful. And this is a very interesting depiction of the Two of Cups. Two of Cups is... You know, generally a man and a lady and they're coming together they're in love it's it's happiness it's beauty it's it's a gorgeous card but in this one the man is that's the devil so yeah th this is an interesting card depiction of this um of this this card that's great let's take a look here so you do have some things going on, I think, in your day-to-day -day world. And I think there has been something that's been causing you 
anxiety, you know, reason to to not get sleep at night, anxiety, worry, you know, look at this. There's there's some difficulty happening, I think, in your day-to-day -day situation. I feel like, and this always happens with group number two. Group number two, you are very spiritual. You're very, very able to be above the issues uh, and the things that are going on. I've just moved this temporarily because I'm going to bring this over here. What the cards are showing is that you're definitely going to move past this situation. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're breaking up with anyone or that you're moving out of the house or that you're leaving the situation physically. No, what it is with the Six of Swords is that you are going to kind of energetically not be attached to what's going on. You're going to be free energetically. Okay, so you're going to be free of the problems. People around you might be suffering still. People around you might be arguing still, or there might be problems around you in your immediate world, but you are going to be quite detached and unaffected and unable to be manipulated, unable to be drawn into the drama. You're going to be fine. And I think what you're being asked to do is to keep building yourself up materially and financially. Okay, we've got the King of Pentacles here. So keep building your world, keep building your life, your health, okay, keep building your prosperity, keep growing, that's going to be important, it's going to be slow, look at that, we've got a turtle here, it's going to be slow, it's going to take time, so it's, it kind of feels like there's no kind of immediate miracles, so we'll check with the Saturn deck in a moment, but for you, there is a new life wanting to be birthed. Distant horizons. I, I'm getting a time factor here. I think this is going to take time. Love is on the table, guys. And this is a really interesting depiction of this because we do have the devil here, which we never have in the Two of Cups. So this is kind of amusing. But it's like, it's like making peace with the devil or something and, and being able to have your love affair, but it not being a clingy addictive love affair it's not going to be that don't worry it's going to be more cosmic <laughs> okay so this if if you you know or, or a new level of love with your partner okay so if you're single and hoping to meet someone you definitely will with the appearance of this card and it's going to be that kind of moonlit romantic lord krishna in the forest playing music type scene it's going to be wonderful this new life, this love that's coming your way. You've just got to guard against any negativity, negative thoughts, anything that's trying to take you off the track or draw you in to something that you know is just going to be a waste of time and you don't want to do it. You know, um, you're going to have to, so you're going to have to pay attention to the thoughts that bother you. Don't fight them. See them and just be like, well, no, thank you. You know, I you know you're not going to be able to draw me in oh they really wanted to be here well let's see it's so the king of wands upright really wants to be here so this is great for love so those of you if you're wanting to meet someone or fall in love or any of that kind of thing or if you want a new level of love in your current relationship it's like this card is saying yes you know um Wonderful. We just had the King of Wands in the previous group. That's amazing. That's great. It's great, masculine, strong, visionary energy. He's creative. He's got a vision. He acts on it. You know, he doesn't waste time. He's in the now. Yeah, I love this. Excellent. Okay. Oh, how beautiful. We've got the Three of Pentacles. This is great. This is you at work, this is you being a master craftsman, being at the top of your game, succeeding. This is you doing really, really well at, you know, yeah, I would say in, in both love and in, in, in terms of making money. And this is really Six of Swords, you at the center, you are doing everyone around you a service by not attaching and not being drawn in. 
you being peaceful. You know, that is a massive service to everybody who's around you at this time. Let's take a look and see what else we have in the guidance. Okay, we've got... Don't probe darkness to understand light. Yes, don't dwell on sickness to be healthy. Don't indulge in thoughts of lack to have supply. Lester Levinson, wonderful. Yeah, you're really being asked to, and I'm just getting the words, like your manifestation or power is high at the moment. Okay, so really be on guard about negativity because I think you're very magnetic at the moment. Also we've got this King of Wands here. Yeah, you're very magnetic. You're very bright uh, and alive and, and being seen by the cosmic consciousness. You're kind of on, okay? And so craft and create a magnificent, your magnificent visions in the hope that they come true, okay? And I, I feel like at this time you're, you're quite... Uh, yeah, magnetic and able to manifest and create things. So again, another message saying basically, as we got up here, pay no attention to the thoughts that bother you. Again, don't probe darkness to understand light. Amazing. And it's not like, the, I, I hope this kind of statement doesn't create any fear in you that, oh, I can't explore my shadow or integrate my shadow. No, you can. There's time for shadow work. We all have to do it. But it feels like this is not the time kind of thing. It's like you would be best served by, by being more positive uh, at this time. Because shadow work and, and, and doing that kind of thing, it does have value. But not right now. I think that's yeah the message there. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Oh, wonderful. I love this quote. The privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are, Carl Jung. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I was thinking about this the other day. Do you know how many people don't make it? Do you know how many people live a life and they weren't themselves for the entire life? You know, how many people live their parents' vision only? Or they live society's vision? Or they live what, what their friends think? Like, that's, that's not you you know, and, and I think people who come to the spiritual path and do inner work are the really lucky ones, are the real privileged ones, privilege of a lifetime. Yeah, people who do, oh, hang on, it's not focusing. People who do inner work, oh, come on, here we go. Um, people who do inner work are blessed. People who have the goal that I want to be my full self. Bruce Lee was like this. I'm hoping to put him in the Masters series at some point. He was brilliant in that he wanted to figure out how to express himself totally honestly. You know, that, that, is, that is it. If, if you can do that in this lifetime, I think that's got to be the ultimate goal, isn't it? And that you're, kind of, you're being asked to be big picture visionary. You're being asked to think about you. Look at that. This really fits in with this. Wow. That's this. So look at look at her physicality. Look at like she's just Yeah, I mean she's being herself. Totally. And that's interesting that Bruce Lee sprang to mind as well. It's like maybe physically how can you be more yourself? I'm not sure, but I, I think it's to do with vision, what it is you want to manifest. Could be physical as well. Could be. But this is a great spread, group number two. I'm really excited for you. I'm just going to put that there. Please let me know how you get on in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, then you're in the right place. Before I draw these, let's take some oracle cards and see what comes up. Well, we just had amazing energy in group two. Let's 
see what happens here. Hope you're well wherever you are. Oh, that really wants to jump out. Let's take it. And one of these. And then we'll flip these over and might even draw a quote. So I'm kind of doing everything out of order today. <clears throat> okay, so. Oh, community, that's lovely. We've had this card before. This is a very English scene with those flowers there. It's kind of like a classic pub type scene. Yeah, I like the Kipper deck. It's very English. Oh, new life. We just had that. Well, let's take it and let's shuffle another one. See, I would sometimes wonder why do the same cards keep popping up? Is it because I don't shuffle enough? See, I didn't really shuffle too much for you just now because this jumped out again. But let's take it. I'll try and I'll shuffle a bit more. But you know, sometimes even when I shuffle a lot, it just the same thing comes again. So, but I'll give you two. Okay. Oh, nice. Higher power. That's beautiful. Well, these are both very similar colors as well. So it's like the universe is kind of saying, no, I meant this, yeah, for this group. So, okay. Because it's, kind of, it's given me like similar vibes and colors. And Okay. So new life and higher power. Okay. What do we have in here? Ooh, flow. I have seen this one before. This is lovely. It's kind of like the circle of life. You know, you're a young boy and you grow up and yeah, live a life. Okay. Let's take one of these and then we'll draw some tarot. And we're gonna look at all of them. I'm not saving any for Instagram today. Okay. When the whole world is running towards a cliff, he who is running in the opposite direction appears to have lost his mind. C.S. Lewis. Yes, I love this. And I think you're, mm, this, is, this could be quite a big reading happening here because we've got community. And I think the community is humanity. I think you're quite innovative. I think you're quite different. I think you might find that out of you and your peers or you and your family, you're quite unique. You do things differently. Yeah, I know I, I kind of um, have a bit of that <laughs> where I'm, yeah, I'm just different. Everyone's doing one thing and I'm doing something very different. Okay, this clearly wants to jump out. It's taken. It's also Rahu energy. I tend to call that being a Rahu. <laughs> if you've got like Rahu conjunct a few planets or if you've got your sun or your moon on Rahu Ketu axis, then, oh, okay. That is the Queen of Cups. Beautiful. She's like that new, new life lady that we saw earlier. Go. Okay, let's see what we've got. And then we draw another couple from the, the black and gold deck. All right, Nine of Pentacles. Interesting, we had that in group one. So this is, you know, finding satisfaction on your own, not needing other people. You, in, in this card here, the person is feeling abundant and happy and successful and I don't need anything or anyone. I'm, I'm totally happy, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm abundant. My heart is full. That's, that's another way of, of seeing that card. Okay, we've got the King of Swords. Wow, powerful. Okay. The Queen of Cups, interesting. So for the masculine, we've got you know, the King of Swords, who is at the height of authority, logic. He's very analytical, very intelligent. Here, the feminine, we've got, you know, she is, she's radiant, she's ready to receive, she's emotional, nurturing, kind. Yeah. Oh, wow, and the Seven of Cups. Okay. So you've got some choices, you've got options. Hmm. 
this is interesting energy group number three I feel like things are very abstract for you actually in life at the moment I think we're gonna let's let's draw everything first and then let's see because I this is all very sort of you're in the ether kind of thing you're not Okay, that definitely wants to be here and so does this let's take it okay see what see what Saturn is Saturn brings us back to reality sometimes so let's see we've got the four of swords okay yeah I think so this is a card all about rest actually and it's, this is a really good time for you to be meditating for you to be not really participating uh, too much in in the world I'm getting let's have a look at this wow the queen of swords okay right so you've got a lot of sword power here and you've got a lot of high powered sword power okay so you are being asked to be logical to use your mind actually I think this is yeah use your head over your heart I would say and I, I kind of feel like you've got a lot of options but it, things feel very I don't know abstract I've got higher power here new life but it's like fine etheric and uh, yeah I've just been putting together meditation PDF and um, I kind of feel that you're quite expanded or something you let's see what we have in these two but that you need rest is important self-satisfaction and you do need to be logical uh, these two you need to be logical you need to think you do need to be practical a bit but the emotions and all of this feels really lovely your your emotional side anyway feels to me like it's um i don't know you're in this nice place i don't i don't sense anything but maybe your high emotional state is um i'll look at that i mean this couldn't have been more perfect look at this yeah hang on focus go on focus there we go Having the fewest wants, I am nearest to the gods, Socrates. This is what I'm sensing for you. Look at that, we've got higher power. We've got all these light pastels. We've got, you know, queen of cups. We've got this beautiful dreamy thing going on here. We've got flow. We've got So there's a big part of you that is basically hanging out with the gods at the moment. And possibly wanting to serve the all um it's a very yeah kind of high energy light worker group you're very refined you're in some high place it's 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 really really lovely but then at the same time which it, which is interesting you are focused on creating abundance and you are being practical whoops this isn't focusing there we go yeah you are focused on your abundance that is true and you're being really practical down to business you know let's get on with it so the, yeah it's kind of two things are going this well a few things are going at the same time you're resting you might be experiencing some ascension symptoms as well uh, if you are quite Mm, your energy is quite fine and high and uh, dispersed or like you're really tapped into the all kind of thing and but you're holding incredible light and like you're you're birthing new earth you're bringing it in you're bringing it in for all of us very much so this is yeah there's some kind of um, quite incredible group of people here guys you are you're doing the world a massive service by meditating but just by being you actually your high level frequency is right now needed because the world is uh, it's just chaos at the moment as we know and but I think many people in this group are probably you're probably not tuning into that and you're probably which I'm not really 
tuning into anymore. I don't watch mainstream news or I don't engage much. Yeah, I'm just kind of doing all my, my work. Um, but I, I sense this group here is like you are, you're the real kind of um, high level, high order light workers. You're holding an incredibly high vibration because new earth is being birthed. The chaos is, is just because love has pushed up the stuff that needs healing. That's just happening and falling away. And you're doing this incredible service of holding a really high vibration. You're, you're going to lift the whole collective up at this time. So amazing. So keep, keep doing uh, what you're doing. Marcus Aurelius, disgraceful for the soul to give up when the body is still going strong. Yes, this is a representation of the chaos that I was talking about. You don't do this at all. No, you're, you're very conscious, very aware. And, but there are people who are giving up. And it's good that, yeah, light workers are going to need their rest right now. And I'll tell you why. When Saturn moves into Aquarius, which is Jan, Feb of 2023, next year, yeah. When Saturn moves into Aquarius, I do think there's going to be, and even this year I did say there's going to be a need for healing, but especially in 2023 onwards, we are going to see some mental health issues come up and uh, everyone's going to need you. Okay, so this is important because get yourself, and I think that's why this Nine of Pentacles has come up here, get yourself into a good, strong financial position so that you can do your light worker business more and more or full time, however that's going to work for you, but get yourself into a place so that like 2023 onwards for 2.5 years, I do think that mental health is going to be quite a bit of a focus. Because Aquarius is uh, home to all the psychiatrists. That's kind of, Aquarius is like the top vibration of the mental and material world. I know we've got academia coming out of you know, Sagittarius ninth house. Yes, man-made systems of thought are there. And I tend to see consultants and those kind of people there. But Aquarius does feature the um, healers of the collective consciousness. And, you know, people who, who can really... Um, it can really help and heal, you know, help help people, help like kind of be a space in which other people can heal. And I think that's what you're getting ready to do. So I think you need to rest now or, or but, but not be pushing yourself kind of thing. Don't be pushing yourself. Don't be working too hard because I think you're going to really be needed when Saturn moves into Aquarius. And I think a lot of mental health issues are going to come up because I think Saturn in Capricorn, there's been a lot of chaos, but one of the things is um, mentally we do have a lot of people who, who, are, who have given up, who are giving up. This is a tough time. 2020 to 2025, the whole world is changing and it's, by the end of 2025, it's going to have changed. It, that's just how this is. This five years is so powerful and the repercussions of this time are going to there's going to be mental health implications going on for yeah uh, at least a decade or two maybe i don't know but uh there there are some issues but it's all evolution you know it's all good we're moving to such an incredible there's such an incredible new earth such an incredible life awaits all of us you know we've all come at this exact time because this really is the most exciting time in history and we're all going to be talking about what did we do you know during the great pandemic because like the, the great war or you know this is what this is this time kind of thing and uh yes what you've been doing uh group number three is you've been helping birth new life into the collective 
that's what you've been doing. You've also been going with the flow of life here. You've been going with the flow. You've been high, holding a very high vibration. You've been bringing it to earth to be birthed. For who? For the entire community. And that is no small feat. And that requires you to rest. <laughs> okay? Like, that is important. And I think you're keeping things ticking along. I think you're doing great. I think you're being practical and, and you're taking care of the material practical things. You're doing your work. You're, you know, um, but it's a lot. And I think, and I think a lot of people don't don't uh, appreciate or recognize that. But see, fellow light workers do. Okay, we get it. In this group here, we get each other. You know, so to the outside world, they're like, "Well, what you just you just meditating all day? What does that do?" But we know, we know the significance, right? So, group number three, take some take some rest this weekend if you can. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know how you got on with this reading. But thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.